What's up, YouTube? Uh, in this video, we're going to go over N phase, ticker symbol ENPH. Um, we will begin with the um, stock price, move into the uh, press release, and then move over to the stock chart. So we'll begin here, we have uh, N phase over the course of one year down 53%, year to date down 48%, I'll call it 49%. Um, Enphase reported its uh, Q2 earnings on or July 27th, um, and then in there, on the moving over to the press release, they stated that they are now shipping the IQ8 microinverters, which is the inverter that takes DC current and transfers it to AC current, and it's the only inverter in the world that does that their first inverter, um, but they are now shipping these to, you know, all these other different countries, um, which, you know, broadens their um, revenue. Uh, so then another key point that they had in here is they purchased uh, more of their 125 million shares in the second quarter at an average price of $159 a share for a total of... Two hundred million dollars. Okay, so then after that, um, they authorized a one billion dollar stock uh, stock buyback. So now they've the 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 cup the the stock is down. Let's see here. They bought it back at one fifty nine, and it's trading at one thirty. I think it's pretty safe to assume that. $30 below where they bought before they're probably going to buy they're probably buying back right now I'd be I'd be really surprised if we get a Q3 result with no stock buyback um, unless they think it's going lower which would be concerning um, which I don't think so based on the valuations and the technicals yeah our ticker symbol and phase we have a future earnings per share growth rate no dividend, 21% uh, forward revenue growth rate. That gives us a ticker, or a, sorry, a peg ratio of 1.5 today and a forward peg of less than one. And if you come down here for the key for peg, it's very rare to see, so far the companies that I value, it's very rare to see less than a one peg in, in the next 12 months. Um, we come over to multiples. We've got four uh, four multiples to choose from here. Gives us an average um, company price, two hundred thirty dollars a share. Graham's valuation auto fills everything in here. We have our growth rate of twenty three percent, one hundred six dollars per share. We have our manual PE of let's see here it comes down eighteen years before this company equals its current market cap at its current growth rate, which is also less than a one peg based on that calculation, on that multiple. Price the book, um, we got all of our, we got our assets, intangibles, total liabilities, outstanding shares. It gives us a book value of 4.6, a price to book value of 28. Now this big thing I like is the return on invested capital is 18.6%. Anything above fifteen percent is is good. And the higher that gets, the better it is for investors. Uh, we come over here. We plug in all of our numbers to get a ten point oh seven weighted average cost of capital, and then we have that transfers over to here. We get two point five percent perpetual growth rate and a growth rate of free cash flow of forty percent. Um, to give you an idea of that number. Uh, Analysts were predicting, I believe, like 32-ish percent, or no, sorry, analysts were predicting 40% on their free cash flow growth rate. And on this chart, we have 257% of free cash flow growth rate. It's because this company's just kind of turned positive. It doesn't have a long run rate of growth for their free cash flow, so it's going to be exponential like this. So I'm going to stick with 40% on what the analysts say on the lowest side there. I think it'll... I think it'll do more than that, really, but I'd rather just be conservative. So anyway, based on that, 
we plug in our free cash flow over the course of the last five years, which 2017, they were not cash flow positive or free cash flow positive yet. <clears throat> and then over the course of the last four years here, they've they've grown really well every year they've gone they've grown their free cash flow and then at a 40 percent growth rate here's what we're looking at for future free cash flows we come down here we have cash and marketable securities um that's they got 1.8 bill 2.5 bill in debt 145 million dollar 145 million shares outstanding for a discounted cash flow uh price of 318 dollars a share over here we have rule 72 type in our ticker we have currently it is earnings per share is 3.93 lowest growth rate 23 percent we come over to here 23 goes into 72 3.13 times how many times is 3.13 going to 10 years b in 10 years is uh the future price of this company well it goes into it 3.2 times and then what we do is we take three and we're going to double our e earnings per share three times over. So we'll just round that up to eight. So um, double number one will be eight. Number two will be 16. And number three, obviously, will be 32. So we got a earning, future earnings per share of 32. And then over here, it gives us our future market value in 10 years time, 1472 fair market value of 368. With a 30% margin of safety, $257 per share for a with a 30% margin of safety. That is fair market value, 30% margin of safety. And then we come over here, we have all of our numbers that got plugged in from all the previous valuations we just went over. And we have between these five, an average price of $223. Purchase price with a 30% margin of safety, $156 a share. So over here, we got a, we're on a weekly chart. We really only have a couple valid trend lines. Anything beyond 2020 is just, there's, it, there's nothing to draw. But we have what appears to be, what, you know, higher lows. If we pivot here and hold this trend line that's been drawn out, which it's possible it's looking like it's stalling out, like it's maybe acting as an area of support at about $130 a share. Um, then this thing right now, in my opinion, is going to retest 130, probably come back up to this downtrend line, which would be 140s, mid 140s. And maybe at Q3, by then it's Q3 earnings which I believe is October. Uh, let's see here. So it wouldn't wouldn't quite make it based on time frame. Depending on what it does down here, it could just sit down here until October, which is about where this cross here is going to, um, you know, where this downtrend and it's uptrend, well, sort of an uptrend, will cross. And then maybe this is the earnings, the Q3 earnings that pushes this thing higher. The only downside to end phase is it's it's solar, so it's not necessary. But people obviously there's a lot of um, uh, government um, support behind it, so that way you get tax benefits and stuff like that through businesses and just personal home use as well. Um, so there's not a huge demand for it when interest rates are high and people don't have the money to just say oh let's put solar on our house this year no they're going to think okay let's save our money because we don't know what the economy is going to do because um, most people just hear or see the headlines and think oh there's a, we're in a recession we're going to re repeat 2008 because they hear that come up too so i think that time frame kind of brings some fear to people and they're not going to spend big money they're going to just do their normal smaller spends that uh, you know, are non-essential. So that's my take on end phase. I think end phase is really undervalued. Um, I have been picking up these shares at these levels. I'm probably going to pick up a little bit more. And 
the end phase has every bit of legroom to get back up to at least to 200 bucks, 212. I mean, that looks like it's another area of what could be resistance, maybe even a bit higher. You can maybe even go 220. 220 range, 210 to 220 is maybe a potential profit taking a little bit, take a little bit off the table. And then maybe ride this thing all the way back up to here with the rest of your shares. And then if it pulls back, maybe pick up some more. Just depends on how the company is doing. But so far, this company is doing really well. It's got a really strong balance sheet. But that does it for end phase. Um, if you would, let me know down below what you think of end phase and where you're potentially looking to buy. And that's it for this video. We'll be back soon with more.